We did some testing yesterday, and every time you do that, you got to go back and look at it and reevaluate it. A couple things up front that I'm going to switch that I didn't care for. Number one is my piezo buzzer. I send it to go up instead of down. Mistake. Got to go down. And I'll show you the footage of what Jared did and why it's important that way and what it's doing. Uh, hitting the whole craft to, sh to shift the center plate doesn't work. You have to just get it down to the center plate. Obvious mistake. Switch it back. Not a problem. Couple bolts and it's done. So let's take a look at this and see exactly what we're looking at. Because the piezo is pointing out towards the meter there and not towards the plate, it'll start to move back and forth. When he changes the frequency and amplitude, it also changes how it works. Now, I want to take this and turn it the opposite way. I want the piezo part towards the plate. So you go, well, hold on, how out of this test can you see that? Well, it has to do with when you pop the piezo itself, it's now creating a movement to the right. I want the pop of the piezo to create the movement towards the disc. Again, we're just dealing with movement here. So, when it goes towards the disc, it's like tapping on the center plate. That's exactly what I want. When you put it the other way, like it is in, in this video right here, you're tapping the frame in order to change it. Well, you're not going to hit that frame hard enough with that piezo in order to change it. But when you turn it around and have it the opposite way of what you're seeing it right now, I can hit that center plate, creating the tap in it and changing what I need to change in it. So, if you can understand that and seeing this exact experiment in the opposite direction, you could then start to understand exactly what I'm looking for. So, changing the piezo, good idea. This experiment gets you to start to think about it and what's actually going on. So, if you can follow me on this, turning the thing around this is exactly what we need to do. Now, a couple other things. Uh, Tesla coil. This coil is not going to work. And I get a lot of comments out there where you can just beef up your Slayer Exciter. Well, let, let's walk through this logically. I can add some diodes to it. I can add some back protection, which is adding some diodes to it. Then, I can go on and I can add some capacitors to it. Okay. Then I can add a few more resistors to it. By the time I'm done, I could spend about $150 with shipping and everything else to build this thing and beef up my Slayer Exciter. But when you really get down to it, what are you doing? This is a ZVS circuit. There's really not much difference. A few extra resistors, diodes in a different place, and we got these. I mean, look. I could go over and mess with the Slayer Exciter for about a week and play with it and tune it up and get everything perfect, but why? I mean, seriously, what we're looking for is we're looking for feedback in a Tesla coil. In building my ZVS Tesla coil, I learned an unfortunate mistake at the time, I thought, but today, it seems like it worked a heck of a lot better for what I really want. I'm looking for this Tesla coil to stop oscillating for a second. That's it. I want the actual power to back up into the number one coil. I want it to make a humming sound. Now, I'll show you footage of it humming. We are now only on the second coil right here. that's connected. We are at 40. Okay. As you saw, it would not oscillate properly. And it started to hum on the number one coil. That's what we're looking for here. I ran this test several times, 
had no problem getting it to hum, the circuit will stand up to the feedback. That's one of the primary reasons I want it. It's going to withstand the beating that I'm going to give it in testing. Please, whatever you do, do not think that I'm going to try to create this hum all the time. This is simply running a Tesla Cola normally, and then when I give it the feedback, I need it to hum for a second. Then I need it to go back to oscillating properly. Please do not think I'm just trying to make this thing hum and hum only. And now you start to see what I'm looking for. I want a hum in it. That's the trigger point so I can hear exactly what's going on. Now, what I'll do in the beginning is I'll run it so I can get a big hum, see exactly where it's at, see how much I can push this thing, and then we'll fine tune it. It'll be a very small one when I'm done, but it'll be an understanding of what the sound actually is. That's kind of more important, isn't it? Find out what the actual sound is, then let's go ahead and put it into what we're doing. Okay, not a problem. That's an easy fix. I, go, I went ahead and I bought a bunch of wire, some new PVC pipe, I got some copper coils, and I got everything I'm going to need. I got the ZVS circuit, I already have the caps or capacitors here, and yes, I have it all. It's just about fine tuning it. You know, I'm willing to sit on the oscilloscope and do it. And that's the important thing. It won't take me more than a couple of days to get this thing out of the way. But it has to be done. I'm tired of blowing uh, transistors. You, you can only blow so many before you realize, hey, it's just not going to work. So, with that said, that's out of the way. High voltage circuit. I run two flybacks. Probably a mistake. I'm going to go back to one. We're going to run the test again. And the, 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 there's a reason here. And talking to uh, TT from the Free Energy Channel, He's talking about his Tesla coil lifter, and he's talking about the gravity flyer. And I can tell you they essentially work in the same way from what I can see. High voltage, high voltage, right here, Tesla coil here in the center. You get one toroidal between the two high voltage fields, not two individual toroidals. It's a different in an understanding of how things work. He got his, you know, lifter to fly. It matches the same setup. Give it a chance. So, it's just a change in your thought and how it's going to work. All it means for us is that we have to take our high voltage and change how it works. So, we're going to add some more amps, take away some volts. So, when you go from two flybacks to one, you're going to be adding in amps, especially the ones that I got. These things put out a ton of it. So we'll just flip to that. Now, if it needs to go further, and I believe this was his point when he was talking about the doubler circuit. This right here, let me show it. This is a ZVS on an AC flyback. Pretty simple, right? Goes into a voltage multiplier. If I eliminate all but that, I essentially have an AC voltage doubler that rectifies to DC through the capacitors. Pretty simple, right? You get the high voltage so you know it's going to move between the two plates. And that's going to be able to make the spray. You get the amps to pull it back in. Now you get the Tesla coil of force against that, creating what we wanted. Different way of thinking about it easy to achieve with either one. We can essentially get a doubler circuit out of that. It's not a problem to switch. We're going to try the single uh, DC flyback and then if it works we'll stick with it. If not we're going to the AC version and we can make that work as well. So let's take a look at this experiment. We're moving a can that's aluminum. We're putting a voltage multiplier on it. We can cut it down to a doubler. And then we're using the magnetic field to move the aluminum. Now, magnetic field, aluminum, eddy current falls right into what we're doing on our gravity flyer. So when TT's talking about 
the magnetic field around the top plate and the bottom plate, this is essentially what he's trying to say. We have aluminum, we have eddy current, we have a magnetic field. The magnetic field requires more amps in order to get it to work. We already know the circuit because we've already built it. Not hard to cut it down and use this the way that it is. And it's still producing the same effects we got from our high voltage flyback, but it's giving you more of the magnetic field in it. Hopefully this is where you guys can start to understand this. It took me a little bit to understand it myself. So this is the actual experiment we should be thinking of when we start thinking about the top and bottom disc. Guys, I did a video a couple days ago. It showed the difference between the, uh, the, the voltage multiplier and a DC flyback and what we're looking for. But when you see that, you also understand I can create both um, a spray or I can create a big magnetic field out of it. So either one's possible. So yeah, I'm okay with doing that. So we'll start with one, move on to the other. That's fairly simple. So some things to think about in there, the piezo buzzer. Uh, people have said Alexi's piezo buzzer does not pop all the time like yours does. And I had to think about it for a while because it doesn't. And it might be that I'm rushing a state before I should. And what I mean by that is I'm getting that megahertz frequency overriding everything else. I'm not getting my regular frequency from my piezo to override the megahertz. So what does that basically mean to everybody? I just need to turn the voltage up on my piezo disc. It'll drown out everything else so that when I hit the button, I'll get the pop. I'm getting the pop all the time. It's a simple fix. It just comes down to, like I said, a little bit of understanding. And if that's the case, that's the case. So my Tesla coil is going to look just like Alexis did in the video that Jared just put out. So let's just do it that way, guys. You know, I, I think this is all in the realm of just fine tuning things and getting things done. We're not making any major adjustments. Where I have everything on the actual gravity flyer is going to stay that way. I really like the wires going through the plate. Didn't affect it at all. I still got all the signals I wanted to get out of it. So that was perfect. That, you know, getting everything to go down to the center is an improvement versus wires everywhere and things possibly blowing up on you, which every time I get sloppy, things blow up. So better off that way, that's done. Real easy to switch out the piezo to my old one and it makes it easy. So that's pretty much a done deal. We got the distances out there so with the wire and that's an important thing. Uh, now it can sit away from everything else. It's not my body coming in contact with a Tesla field. So that's, that part was important to look at. So that's covered. So I guess it really comes down to uh, tuning it up, and, and that's where we're at. We know the different states that we can get into. We know the vibrations. We know the frequencies. We know how to align it. And, you know, I think I'm going to cheat a little bit. I might put the, uh, you know, probe out there and see what on my oscilloscope, each channel. I'll just see what it is. You know, we'll do a little cheating. We'll try to line those things up and get a heavier, heavier pop on that piezo when we do it. But uh, that's basically where I'm at, guys. I got a whole bunch of things to switch around on this. Probably going to take me today, maybe into tomorrow, to get the fixes done, and then we're back to testing. So I don't want to try to rush something in that I know is not going to work. I could easily go out, but go back and put in either another transistor under my Tesla coil, but there's no point. There's just no point. I mean, I guess you'd have to sit here went on testing and be in the room and go like, how many times can you do the same thing over and over again and get the same result? And well, yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm not going to do the same thing again. And the crazier thing is, it's when I push the button that it's blowing up. It's not in normal operation. It's when I push that button. It, I can't explain it. I, I'm putting an overload into it when I'm pushing the button and it can't handle the overload 
and that's where I'm at. So we'll tweak those things, get back to testing. Just an update. There's gonna be no testing video today. We're gonna go into tomorrow and do it. And then we're gonna find out exactly how much uh, each change made, and hopefully it works out. Anyway, thanks for watching today, guys. If you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.